Hi, welcome back to Reading with Money. I'm Money, and today I am starting a new vlog. It's gonna be a themed vlog. Um, one of the books I have on my TBR for this month is What Moves the Dead by Taking Fisher, which is a retelling of the Edgar Allan Poe story, uh, The Fall of the House of Asher. And um, I haven't read that in ages, so I thought I would read that story first, then read uh, What Moves the Dead, and then uh, in another book that I have on my TBR, which is The Martian Chronicles, which I have somewhere, but I'm not gonna get up and get it right now. The Martian Chronicles is um, a book by Ray Bradbury, and it's basically uh, a collection of short stories about the colonization of Mars by humans. And one of the stories is called Usher 2, and it's also like a retelling or modern version or futuristic version of that story. So I thought I would put all of my reading experiences with The House of Usher uh, on this vlog. So I'm probably gonna read the Edgar Allan Poe story tonight before I go to bed and then tomorrow I'm gonna start um, the Ticking Fisher book. So I'll let you know how I go but I am super excited about this. Um, I think it's brilliant. I, I sometimes I feel very weird about retellings. I'm like Oh, another retelling but this one I am super excited about so yeah I know I'm a hypocrite whatever anyway talk to you later okay quick update before I go to bed because it's late I finished yesterday the fall of the house of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe I had forgotten I hadn't I don't I don't know if I've ever read that story in English, actually. I'm pretty sure I read it in Spanish. But I have read other Edgar Allan Poe things in English since then. And I had forgotten the sheer amount of, you know, weird vocabulary that he used and his sentence structures. It took me a while. I mean, it didn't take me too long, but it took me, like, a few pages to get used to it. Um... But it's fantastic. I don't have much to say about it. It's a classic. It's really, really good. Um, really creepy. But uh, I did start um, What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher today on the bus. And it's quite a short book. It's less than 200 pages. And I'm already halfway through. So definitely going to finish it tomorrow because I need to go to bed now. But I am fascinated by this book. Oh my god, her writing style is amazing. Um... I was complete, I mean, I think I did really well in reading the original story first uh, to remind myself of the characters and like everything, but the way that she has fleshed out all of these characters into a, a bit of a longer story and the new characters that she added and um, yeah, the, the narrator and um, them being non-binary, I guess. There's a whole explanation in the book about it. Um, it has to do with the country they are from and like becoming soldiers and whatever. It's a very complicated thing. But it talks about pronouns and ah, oh, I loved it. Um, so yes, I am really, really enjoying this book. I think it's going to be a favorite as well. Um, so yeah, I'll probably have more thoughts tomorrow once... No! My cat keeps trying to destroy my property to call my attention. Anyway... Uh, what was I saying? Right, I'll probably have more thoughts tomorrow when I finish the book. Um, but yes, I am really loving it. The atmosphere that is evoked in the original story, like of that gloom and dread and like, yeah, it's really present in this book as well and I am loving it. So yeah, I'll catch you up tomorrow. Okay, so I have 30% left of the book. Today is Tuesday. I had to think about it. Today is Tuesday, the 16th, and um, I have 30% left of the book. What is my cat doing? Anyway, um, and the, I just read a part that, like, I was on the bus, and I, and I literally, it made me literally, like, recoil, like, from how icky it was. It was, it was so, oh god. <laughs> Okay, if you're queasy about certain things, I don't know if this... I mean, it's briefly mentioned, but just the, the, the thought, the idea, just... Yeah, I'm not normally queasy about things. I 
think but this just made me like ugh, like shudder so yeah um yeah i am <laughs> this book oh my god um again i am in awe at how much um from the original story is there but also like all the extra stuff that's going on and um with all the extra characters and the different dynamics so i'm yeah i can't wait to finish this book um <laughs> yeah i cannot yeah uh more coherent thoughts when i finish it maybe who knows i just read a bit more and i spoke too soon now i'm disgusted what is this book i know what this book is but I was, yeah, I should have known from the cover of this book what to expect. And like from the first conversation about mushrooms and fungi. Bye. So uh, today is Thursday. I haven't updated you because yeah, I didn't really have time. Uh, but I did finish um, What Moves the Dead on Tuesday, I wanna say. And again, I loved it. Five stars. Um, I loved all the characters, like I said. I think I said. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, Alex Easton, they are fantastic. Um, I love the way they dealt with things and um, their whole personality and the way they interacted with uh, the other characters. I just... yes. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, and then... <laughs> I, I absolutely uh loved when things actually got super creepy yeah and the whole resolution of the whole story yes and the author's note oh my god everything was just fantastic about this book and i really really enjoyed it um so yeah i don't know what else to say apart from like go read it because it was great it was just it was a lot of fun it was creepy it was so well done and uh, I am forever scared of mushrooms now. Anyway, um, I am gonna start, like I said, The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I am, I am actually reading this for the Magical Readathon, uh, hosted by G from Book Roast. And um, it fits really well with another vlog I am doing, where I'm reading my favorite science fiction books from when I was a teenager. I mean, not that I was alive when this was originally published, but... Uh, I did read all of these science fiction books, like from Ray Bradbury and uh, Isaac Asimov, etc. Because my dad uh, recommended them to me and I was like, yes. So, um, <laughs> I am filming a vlog for that, so this is very fitting. And there is, like I said, a story called Usher 2 in this. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I said before that Usher 2 was a retelling also of The Fall of the House of Usher. But now... I'm starting to remember, I'm starting to like, I have the idea that it's not, it's not a retelling and I think, I mean, it does have elements of the fall of the house of Usher, but it also has elements from other Poe stories. So I'm very intrigued to see what I actually, if what I actually remember now is actually what happens in the story, but it's halfway through the book, so. Um, I'll probably update you once I actually get to the story because I am gonna be reading them in order because it is a chronology, so like it says in the um, contents page. Um, so yeah, very excited to read this and wrap up the vlog once I do um, read that story. So see you then.
it's Friday and um, I'm all red for some reason. I don't know if it's because I was leaning on my cheek when I was reading just now or what just happened, but yeah, I've just finished reading Usher 2. And uh, yeah, I was right when I said yesterday that it's not exactly a retelling, but yeah, it does have elements of the fall. Oh my God, I just hit myself with a book. It does have elements of <laughs> the fall of the house of Usher. And yeah, other uh, stories are mentioned like um, the mask of the red death, um, the telltale heart, and well, the cask of Amontillado. Uh, Amontillado? How do you say that in English? Or I don't know, the cask of Amontillado as I know it. And uh, oh, it's so great. Uh, Bradbury is just an amazing writer. Um, if you've never read anything by Ray Bradbury, I truly recommend any of his short stories or any of his books. Um, I have many favorites by him, but <laughs> yeah. It also connects kind of a bit with um, Fahrenheit uh, 451 because they do talk about uh, book burning in uh, this story. And oh my God. The premise of this story is that uh, this man that is very bitter that they have burned all the books, especially a books about fantasy or science fiction or the future or horror and he goes to Mars to build a house like the house of Usher where he can enact his revenge on uh, some of these important people or at least the government or whatever in a truly um, Poe fashion let's say and so he creates this house which really um, captures the atmosphere of uh, Usher Manor and like the the tarn the lake and the hedges and all of the things, the sedges, I think they're called. And uh, well, the inside as well. And um, he has robots uh, killing people, basically. And <laughs> it's just so good. It's just incredible. I love Bradbury. I can't wait to finish this book now. And there was there were parts that actually made me laugh out loud. And um, parts that got me like, huh. Right, yeah. I'm not sure exactly when this particular story was written because uh, some of these stories are from the 40s and other from the 50s or 70s. Like, it took him a while to compile all of these stories, I guess. And um, there's one part that felt very timely and I thought I'd read it to you. It starts talking about how they, they burned all of these books. He says, they began controlling books of cartoons and detective books and of course films, one way or another, one group or another, political bias, religious prejudice, union pressures. There was always a minority afraid of something. And a great majority afraid of the dark, afraid of the future, afraid of the past, afraid of the present, afraid of themselves and shadows of themselves. It's, it just feels so timely. And then um, there is another part um, that actually made me laugh. It goes on like this in this uh, at length, the character that is ranting at this thing. But then there's a part that he says that uh, he continues talking about how they burned all these all of these libraries and books and like even private libraries by of private citizens. And then <laughs> it says, just as you put a stake through the heart of Halloween and told your film producers that if they made anything at all, they would have to make and remake Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> My god, how many times have I seen For Whom the Bell Tolls done? 30 different versions, all realistic, all realism. Oh here, oh now, oh hell. And it made me laugh because I truly hated um, the, the couple of things I read by Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> so yeah, oh my god, I just love this story so much. Uh, but yes, I think that that about wraps it up for this vlog. I am very glad I did this. Um, feels like a nice way to end this. I actually think that my dad gave me this book and told me to pay particular attention to Usher 2 and then he gave me a book of um, Poe's stories to see what I recognized from this. Oh my god, yeah, it's a good way. It was a good introduction to Edgar Allan Poe, I think. Anyway, like I said, I'm glad I did this vlog thing. I had a lot of fun uh, reading like different iterations of this story and um, yeah, um, so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like if you did. Let me know then in the comments if you have read any of these um, books or stories or whatever. We can gush about the girl and Poe if you want. 
and yeah subscribe if you haven't already to see what else i read in a month i'm picking up the pace now so i should finish quite a quite a lot of books this month but anyway um uh, that's it for me i'll see you in the next one bye happy reading